Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Howdy all, Asshole Consulting. Go visit it, and if you got questions, probably. I'm very rushed today. I had to drive the motorcycle out to the mechanics, and I had to ride, uh, run the 10 miles back, so I got my run in plus more. Now I have to have cigars with my buddy. We have priorities today. Very short request. I like these. When do you think the U.S. economy will collapse, and what do you think will happen during said collapse? Or will the world continue like this forever? Should I prepare or just enjoy my life while it's still available? We'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Okay, here is the 100% correct answer. Nobody knows. I don't know. No one knows how it's going to happen or when it's going to collapse. I always get a kick out of people like, yep, yep, 2016, now's the time for the collapse. Mm -hmm. like, you don't know. Uh, but what we do know is that since we run deficits by math, what we're doing is unsustainable. So there are three scenarios, one of which is going to happen. Uh, okay, there's four. The fourth one being we get our cumulative shit together, we start paying off debt, and we start lowering taxes, we start cutting social spending, and we start having uh, uh, private individual people take over their lives instead of constantly relying on the state. But since nobody likes that and every successive generation is more retarded than the one before, that's not going to happen. So here are the three potential scenarios of which I have no clue when they're going to happen. One, the rest of the world continues to suck worse than the U.S. And what this revisits is the fact that the United States, for all of our problems and all of our deficits and all of our drawbacks and all of our parasites, we're not as bad as the rest of the world. As bad as we are, pretty much every other country out there of significant economic size, I know Switzerland, I know Norway, I know Liechtenstein, all these countries have better populations and better finances than we do and better people, uh, but they're not big enough to absorb or produce the economic production necessary to either lend against or to have the capital in order to actually generate the economic production that is necessary to, to get the world out of its economic woes. So uh, the U.S. is the largest and least corrupt first world nation of any significant size out there. And so what that means is even though we're bad, the rest of the world is worse, as we're seeing in China, and that they're going to flight to safety. And that will reinforce our world reserve currency status, which essentially makes our currency, the dollar, a super currency. And it also um, negates or moots the deficits and debts we're running. We can rack up a ton of debts because people want our fucking money. Um, it's, it's just, it has the value. Uh, people will lend money to our government, even though it's technically insolvent, because we're not as bad as theirs. Now, that will buy us some time in a reprieve, which will make it that the government can always get funded. Uh, the, we will export our inflation of sorts because people want to buy our dollars. So it's like, okay, here you go. You know, <laughs> there it is. It's paper. Uh, so we won't really... the, the uh, the currency that the Federal Reserve is, quote, printing, that's shipped overseas and now is spread across the global currency instead of us, just our domestic one, which if that was the case, then we'd have inflation. And so that would be the best of all three in our lifetime, ignoring the fourth one where the millennial generation gets their head out of their ass to say the baby boomers don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Gen X didn't know what the fuck they're talking about. We demand a better, more great uh, America is awesome. It's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. So this is the best of the possible scenarios. All right, so that's option number one. Option number two, world continues on like it does, but we still slowly decline. Um, the world reserve currency is not enough to overcompensate for or to compensate for the fact that we import basically lazy fucking second and world world third world fucks into our country that just want to go live on welfare. Um, there's continual deterioration amongst the Native American population. I'm not talking Indians. I'm talking like native-born Americans, because it's like okay, you can pick on immigrants all you want, but fucking a, go look at your typical suburbanite brat 
that is just a worthless fucking human being watching the Kardashians or Miley Ray Cyrus and they go to college for some worthless fucking degree and then bitch and whine and want a government job. I mean, it, 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 that, that, in other words, it doesn't matter how good the U.S. dollar is or what our reputation was before. We have such a quickly decaying uh, quality and caliber of a population, both native and immigrant, that we we decline faster. We, we outsuck the, any benefit that having a world reserve currency. So then, kind of like the Great Recession, you know, it's stagnation occurs. We have new normals where unemployment is 10%. Underemployment for youth is is 25%. They're heck 50% by some measures. Uh, we have to keep printing off money because we can't generate the economic growth necessary to grow the tax base to pay for things. Uh, and then inflation slowly starts to kick in where... Even some country, you know, maybe China, Russia, all these other countries, maybe they do form a, an alternative world reserve currency, and uh, there's demand for that, and demand for the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency goes down. So people slowly start abandoning the United States. Uh, you will get your Social Security check, but it will be a fraction of what it could purchase um, that you were promised because of inflation or commodity, probably like food and all that. And then the worst scenario would be some event triggers an immediate or more immediate economic collapse. A war. Some fucking Muslim nut job gets a goddamn nuke and lets it off in Shanghai. And the, they blame the Americans. The Americans blame the Russians. And, and then we go into war, global war of some kind. Um, or, I don't know, a, a huge financial crisis. Some, you never know where it's going to come from. But something that is so shocking to the system that it requires genuine economic production and massive economic production at you know pretty what scale up pretty quickly, and we just don't have the capacity or the hardworking people or the intelligent people to do it. With the society cannot rise to the occasion, institutions start to collapse, people start to lose lose faith, electricity is shut off. And those who can run the farthest, fastest, and uh, shoot the best are the ones that uh, end up kind of taking over. There's a huge die out real quickly. Uh, preppers and people who are a little bit smarter, maybe they can retake over the cities and, and kind of, you know, maybe there's hopefully enough engineers uh, that live that you can kind of get society back to working again. Uh, but you're looking at something like um, the starvation of the Soviets or the, the Chinese uh, where, where the infrastructure and the, the food supply just isn't there anymore. Cities, cities will tank immediately. There'll be a, an escape out of the cities. Uh, people from you know the country who got sick of tire supporting people in the cities and the suburbs and the preppy suburbanites and the, and the trailer parks and the ghettos. They just start shooting people that try and escape the city. They starve, they die out, and there's more shooting. But there's no law, and no one's going to stop them. So once again, it helps to have guns and iodine pills. And that, that would be where you were like, oh, you really got to prepare for it. So, how should you prepare for that or in, enjoy the decline? The answer is both. You prepare and you enjoy the decline. Right? And you can read the book, Enjoy the Decline, because it's all there. But prepare, yeah. Get yourself some guns. Learn to shoot the guns. Get different type of guns. Get iodine pills. Get a bug out bag. Have a plan B. Have a place to go after if the economy collapses. Buy silver. Buy precious metals. <clears throat> some that, if any one of these scenarios occur, that you have something that will hedge against a collapsing uh, currency or inflation or hyperinflation. Um, won't be able to use silver immediately in a post-apocalyptic world, but it will inevitably make its way back. Um, what else? Stay in good physical shape. Eat right. Diet. Exercise. Uh, grab yourself, you know, read. It's in Enjoy the Decline, like, you know, prepping and all that up stuff. Read about prepping. Uh, have a skill. Buy some tools. Be able to be a good mechanic. All this other stuff so that whether it's a complete and utter collapse and you know how to, like, regenerate electricity, or it's not a huge collapse, but you can act as a pretty good auto mechanic and fix everybody's old cars because no one can afford a new one and that therefore your skill is in demand. It's, it's kind of the same group of things and skills and actions and decisions and purchases you need to make that will have varying levels of value depending on the gradation of you know, scenario one, two, or three, uh, what will be um, uh, most important. Uh, but then in terms of enjoy the decline, yeah, just, just you got to let it go. Just let it go. Relax. Uh, go have fun, enjoy life, go travel, um, you know, eat good food, take in movies, play video games, you know, just enjoy life as you normally do, but just be prepared 
in case, you know, one, there's a giant economic collapse, uh, or two, you know, the U.S. is all of a sudden going on to about fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, twelfth place, um, and no longer is the dominant uh, global currency. Or, you know, we may get lucky. Maybe we could pull this bullshit off. Maybe, I mean, we've been very fortunate and now. The rest of the world essentially subsidizes our living. China has an artificially low exchange rate so that the Chinese slave away for us and make the fucking iPods and all this other crap that we buy from them way cheaper than, than their true actual cost because they have an artificial exchange rate. But that's fine. And, and that's fine. It's kind of like restaurants, you know, they go out of business. Like, why can't these good restaurants stay in business? Hey, you should be happy. The fact they went out of business meant they were charging you less than what they could afford. They were subsidizing your food. That's awesome. That's great. And the world essentially does that now for us. So, Anyway, hey, hope that helps. Don't let it get you down too much. But yeah, read the book because mentally, that's the hard challenge is mentally accepting there's going to be a decline, that there is a decline, and that we're never going back to the 40s or 50s. And to still find happiness, purpose, agency, reason to live. Uh, despite that. So, best of luck. Toodles.